So hyperextension in the elbow can look a little something like this when the elbow is bowed back the other way. If we go into a plank position, I'm just gonna show you all my knees to start off with. If you rotate your elbows forwards, like I'm driving forwards, you'll see the full crease of my elbow. And you'll tend to find people collapse into the shoulders this way. Sometimes you're told to turn the elbows out, but this can also mean that you're weaker in this position as the elbows will flare out. I want you to try and find like a happy medium. So come into position, and instead of putting your weight onto the outside of like the pinky finger, think about driving through the index finger. You should then have your like the crease of the elbow pointing around 45 degrees forwards. Keep this tension and then step back into a plank without letting yourself push back into either too far forwards or too far backwards. This can take a little bit of practice and so make sure you're breathing the whole time and maintaining core control. I'm going to show you how this relates to a split grip on the pole. So reaching up in a handshake grip or a true grip with the inside arm down. A lot of the time you'll see this elbow flare out to the side so the crease will be out or people will be leaning in on the elbow. A lot of the time that's because people are standing too close. And again, their little finger, their pinky finger is taking too much of the weight. So thinking of that index finger driving down the pole and not allowing your elbow to flare out, you want the crease of the elbow pointing at the pole. If you start off too close to the pole, then the lower hand can automatically kind of flare out. So start by trying to square off your shoulders, externally rotate that arm, drop your hips back, and that will allow that hand to come below the hips. Again, push through the index finger, point the crease of the elbow towards the pole, and then see if you can maintain that position as you lift your feet. It's such a small movement, but it can make such a massive difference. Not only is it gonna make you stronger, but it's also gonna help prevent injuries, because over time, if you continually push through this hyperextended position, you're gonna to start to really wear down the joint um, and get your elbow not too happy with you. So I know it takes a little bit of time to get used to, but this is gonna definitely pay dividends in the long run. I'm just showing you from a few different angles here, making sure that again, you're not allowing it to relax and push out, keeping the elbow crease pointing towards the pole, keeping your shoulders as square as possible and allowing it to be balanced between the pull and the push. So with my top arm, I'm pulling down with my lat and then I'm pushing through the lower arm with my chest. I do a big circle with my lower arm so that I can feel the push with my chest and shoulder rather than just my wrist and my hand. You don't have to do this every time, it's just until you can feel the technique. It works exactly the same if you're in a standing split grip position or in an inverted handspring or Aisha shape. With the lower arm, the elbow crease must be pointed towards the pole and not hyperextended. So you'll see that as I come up, if I allow the elbow to relax and push out into a hyperextended position, I'll start to spin and therefore lose stability. I hope that all made sense to you guys. We've had so much talk about hyperextension this week. I wanted to try and give as much information that I could. Um, I'm currently in a van doing my voiceover because um, it's nice and quiet in here and uh, there's no echo. Um, so yeah, if you pair the pole wad video that I've done and also this bonus video, then hopefully it, look, it should all start to make sense. Take your time over it, ask me any questions that you have and yeah, hopefully it helps. John.